Now we're going to take a look at the Lithionics uh, 130 amp hour battery. Uh, it is an option uh, to get two of those batteries in the Oliver Legacy Elite. Uh, you can get actually three in the Oliver Legacy Elite 2. Um, now with this particular battery, it is similar to the larger 315. Uh, it does not have an internal battery heater, however. So with this one, you would have a battery heater mat. That mat will be located underneath the batteries with a switch on top that you will have to manually turn on and off. Now the only time the batteries have to be heated uh, will be when you're looking to charge the battery in freezing conditions uh, or if you're in really, really cold weather conditions, uh, even when using the battery. Um, outside of that, during the summer or warm months, you would always want to leave that mat turned off. Uh, if you're not charging the batteries, uh, you may want to leave it turned off based on the, ex um, the outside temperature because you will be drawing power from the battery to heat that mat. Now the mat itself does have a built-in temperature sensor. That temperature sensor is going to look at the temperature uh, and kick on and make sure that the batteries stay above freezing in order to, to charge them. Uh, and then it should automatically kick off. Again, the cold temperature cutoff is below the 32 degrees for charging the batteries. And the cutoff is below zero degrees for discharging. Now with these batteries, still the same with the LED blue rings. Uh, when they're on, that means the battery is on. When it's flashing, it means the battery is charging. Um, now with these, they're pretty similar to, to the larger as far as storage goes. You will want to discharge them down to about 50%. Uh, and if they stay in storage longer than six months, you would want to charge them back up and then discharge them back down uh, to 50%. Uh, once you do that, that's good for roughly another six months. Uh, now, if you are doing short-term store, uh, storage, uh, say where you're only going to be leaving, uh, leaving it sitting for you know, two or three weeks, that's not necessary. Uh, the only time you really want to drop it to 50% for uh, storage is long-term. Uh, long-term storage is considered anything three months or longer. Uh, as far as the other operations of this battery, Again, it is a lithium battery, so you don't really want to pay attention to the voltage as much as you want to check the state of charge. That state of charge, you're going to need the Lithionics battery app, um, log into each battery and take a look uh, to see what the state of charge is uh, so that you'll know how much power you still have to use or if you should be charging the battery at. With the lithium battery, you have the availability to use up to 100% uh, of the charge state. Uh, it's a little different from uh, like an AGM or standard 12 volt where you roughly get about 50% before it drops below 12 volts. With the Lithionics lithium batteries, you can actually utilize up to 90% uh, of the battery's charge uh, at 12 volts or higher. Uh, it'll at that point, it'll actually power off and, and reserve that last 10%. Uh, you can, of course, choose to go ahead and turn the battery back on and utilize the last 10% of the battery charge. That last bit will be below 12 volts, uh, and I believe it's 10 and a half to 11.9 volts in that last 10% state. The settings can be changed inside the charger, but we typically set it for 150 amps per hour. Uh, reaching full charge state as quickly as four hours. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Lithionics battery app. Now you will need to download this and uh, we will definitely give you some instructions on how to download it from the uh, Google store uh, or the iTunes app store. Uh, once you have it, you would just simply click the app. Once it pulls up, it's going to Bluetooth connect to any battery in the vicinity. So you will need to make sure that you get the number of your battery. Uh, the number of your battery is located on the top of the battery itself. Uh, and you would just find that number and then locate it uh, on the phone. Once you locate it on the phone, you'll select each battery. Now this goes into each individual battery itself. It does not look at this as a, a battery bank. 
Uh, but once you're inside, you can take a look. It shows you what the current voltage is. If there's any current, either um, a load is going to show as a red number, uh, which means you are drawing from the batteries. Anything showing in green is going to show that the batteries are charged. Now, this particular one's at 100% right now, so there's no real charge state and there's no load coming on the battery. Uh, we can also see the battery temperature in here. Uh, and how, how much time we have left roughly um, with the current state of the battery and the current load. Uh, you can also see any status codes uh, if something's going on and of course the state of the battery is on. You can scroll to the next screen, get a little bit more information broken down in the table view. You can actually see each individual cell uh, inside the app itself. So you can see each cell and what the voltage is in that. Uh, once you've checked one, uh, roughly both batteries should look the same. However, you can choose the other, uh, go into it and take a look at what that battery shows. Uh, this one roughly is the same. We see roughly the same voltage, no current draw right now, uh, and the battery temperature is fairly the same between the, the two of them. Uh, once you're done, you can just simply uh, close the app. Now, I would like to tell you, once you log into this battery on this device, if you have more than one uh, device, a uh, um, tablet and a phone, this device is currently locked. A tablet will not be able to even see this battery to log into it until I get completely out of it and disconnect from the app, uh, which would actually have to be closed completely out.